Have you ever been working with some library that uses TypeScript and you need to get access to some type that's like returned by one of their built-in functions, or maybe there's a built-in type that's actually only accessible inside of some other type? In this video, I'm gonna show you a bunch of built-in helpers in TypeScript that will let you do just that. So let's get into it. My name is CJ, welcome to Syntax. And for this example, I just have a Prisma query. So uh, I'm querying a restaurant's table and including all of the related items like menu items in the city and the orders. And each of those I'm potentially also including fields too. And also like the restaurant owner and like uh, all of their nested properties and different things like that. So you can imagine that the return type of this function is going to be very complex. Now I'll mention Prisma does have built-in type helpers to get the types of the return of this function here. Uh, but I'm just using this as an example because you might be dealing with a library that doesn't have those built-in type helpers. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how we can use the built-ins in Prisma. But the first thing is I want to get the type of this return function, right? It's some super complex nested type. How do I do that? Built into TypeScript is the return type helper. So I can create a type called restaurant and set it equal to return type and then pass in the type of that function. So if I say type of get restaurant, I now have a type that represents that return type. So for instance, I could have a function that's like format response or something. Maybe I got this restaurant from an API. Maybe I'm not dealing with this directly next to the database call, I could have like the restaurant here, pass that in and then potentially use it. So let's just log restaurant dot and we'll notice our first first issue. So you can see here that this has like catch and then on it. And that's because this actually returns a promise. So your next helper is the awaited helper. Essentially, if I have a type that represents an awaited value or a, basically a, a promise, I can use awaited and that will give me the value inside of it. So I can do it like this. And now restaurant just represents the restaurant type itself, not a promise. So you'll notice if I do dot, now we get access to the actual properties because we've essentially extracted the return type and, and got rid of all the promise and everything. And we have a, a good old restaurant type that we can now use. Now your next helper deals with getting the keys of a specific type. So let's say I had a function that's called like validate field and it takes in a specific key. Here we'll say that it's a string and we're also gonna pass in a restaurant instance. Now, uh, first of all, let's just try logging the restaurant at that specific key. Now, if this were JavaScript, we could do this, right? I mean, technically we still could do this in TypeScript if we get, if we ignored it, but TypeScript is telling us, hey, that key could be anything. Um, it, it's not just limited to the keys specifically on a restaurant. So you probably already know about this one, but I just wanna show it to you anyways. Let's say we call this the restaurant fields. I can simply just say key of restaurant. And now I have a union type that represents all of the fields on that specific restaurant. However, you can see that it says never <laughs> because I forgot one thing. So this uh, database call could actually return null. So if we look at this, it's this whole value or null. So we need one more helper. I'm actually going to use a uh, non nullable. So non nullable, it's built into TypeScript. And if I pass this type into that, now I have a type that cannot be null. You can see that it removes that, that null property. And now whenever we say key of, we can see that this is a type union that has all of those specific fields. And now this is useful here because I can pass in restaurant fields. And now TypeScript is happy because if I call this function, function elsewhere, right? If I say validate field and I pass in, let's say like city, uh, TypeScript is going to be just fine with that. And of course I have to pass in a valid restaurant type. Um, but if I were to pass in banana, <laughs> TypeScript's going to complain because, hey, that's not a valid key on that specific type. Now it's important to note that this is still just TypeScript. We're not doing any sort of runtime validation. We're basically defining these types and then writing our code as if we had those types already in that form, right? Here, I'm basically expecting that restaurant is going to be in this shape whenever I, it gets passed into this function. If I wanted any actual runtime validation, I'd need a library like that for like Zod or Sinclair Typebox, or I could write it by hand. But it's important to note, I'm not actually validating these types. I'm just writing code that is very editor friendly. And I'm basically telling TypeScript what I'm going to expect. And in turn, it's going to show me errors if the code I'm writing does not adhere to the types that I have that I'm using or that I've defined here. But again, this is not runtime validation. This is just making it so that our code is, is a bit nicer and uh, giving us errors in the way that that we want according to the types that we've defined. Now, your next helper is nothing crazy, but essentially, what if I want a type of some nested type? So if you look at restaurant, it has a bunch of things. It has like menu items and orders and city and owner. Let's say I want a 
type that represents city that's inside of that type, I can just use bracket notation. So let's say city is restaurant bracket. You can see I get access to all these fields. And if I say city, I now have a type that represents just that city type. So I could write a function that's like geolocate and it accepts a city type and I could use that type there. Now your next helper is very useful if you're dealing with like API responses where the properties are potentially undefined or something like that. And it's called partial. So let's say I have a type here. We're going to call it bad restaurant and I can say partial and then pass in my type. And now I have a type where every single property is optional. <laughs> and so, like I said, it's super useful if you're dealing with like an API response, right? So if I have a function that's like a format response and it takes in a restaurant, but this is going to be a bad restaurant. Now I'm telling TypeScript that my code should have lots of guard checks, right? Because if I try to access specific properties on that restaurant, let's like, let's say city.name, then I need to have some check to make sure that city is not undefined. In this case, we're using optional chaining. I could use an if statement, whatever else, but I'm basically telling TypeScript, hey, make sure that I do the work down here because this value could potentially be missing some of those fields. Now, another useful built-in type is actually the reverse of this. Like, let's say you have some type that has a bunch of optional properties, but you know that the data you're going to be dealing with has those properties, you can use required. So let's create a type called good restaurant, and this is required, and then we'll pass in the bad restaurant. So we went we went the other way. We took, we took a type that had a bunch of optional properties and then created a type where every single property is now required. And again, this is useful if, let's say, you've already done some validation and you know that those properties can't be undefined anymore because you have some code above it that validated them. You could use this type now and not have to do this optional chaining everywhere if you're sure that that type isn't going to have optional properties anymore. Now, your last two type helpers allow you to take a type and specifically choose the properties you want on it to, to create a new type or get rid of some properties. And so the first one is called pick and we can pick specific properties that we want. So let's call this restaurant minimal and it's going to be equal to pick. We'll pass in the type restaurant and then we can pass in a type union of keys. And so let's say I want to just have the ID type on this object here. And now if we look at it, we'll see it's an object that will only have an ID, but this can be a type union. So I could also pass in any valid key like name. And then let's also pass in like orders. And now I have a type that only has those three properties. Now, again, this is super useful if you know that you're only dealing with like a subset of the properties of some type and you don't want the type to lie about all those extra properties. You can just use pick. Now, the reverse of this is to take a type and just omit a few properties. And that helper is called omit. So if we call this restaurant mostly, we can say omit pass in the type. And here we'll say we want to omit like the orders like this. And so now I have a type where it has all the properties except for orders, but let's also not include like menu item. And now if we look at the type, it doesn't have that specific property. So that's it for all of the type helpers that I'm going to show you here. I highly recommend you check out utility types in the TypeScript documentation because it has quite a few that I didn't mention here, but all of these are super useful if you're working with some library and you need to perform some modifications on some of the types on, on that specific library that you're dealing with. Now, I did say I would show you how to do this with Prisma itself. So if you look in the Prisma docs, they have this section called operating against partial structures of your model types. And then they have this table name, get payload. So any table defined inside of your schema, it's going to exist on Prisma dot table name, get payload. And then you can pass in your specific query. So in my example, if I say Prisma dot restaurant, get payload, and then pass in the exact same include query that I'm including in this Prisma query here, this is actually going to give me back a restaurant type that represents that specific type. So like I said, if you're inside of Prisma, you technically would wouldn't need these types of helpers, but I've worked with libraries that don't have built-in helpers like this, and I've had to reach for things like omit and pick and partial and, and different things like that. Now, if you want to keep upping your TypeScript game, definitely check out Type Challenges. So this is a GitHub repo made by AntFu, and uh, it's awesome. You, I would definitely say if you're newer to TypeScript, start on the easier ones, but this is going to teach you about a bunch of other built-in utility types and some of the more common things that you might do with TypeScript. And also check out Type Hero. So this is by the wonderful Trash Dev and all of his community, and you actually have type challenges that you can do to learn about generics and other built-in types and stuff like that as well. If you have any other utility types that you use often and you think people should know about, let us know down in the comments. But that's all I got for you now. I'll see you in the next one.